here's another great recipe for you. Now we are in winter, so what do you want? Oftentimes something warm and soothing. And so what happens so often is that we are thinking about things like cereals and oatmeals because our body's looking for metabolically warming foods. So this is one great way to trick your body into being very satisfied with a very low carbohydrate meal because it's gonna be warm and two, it's gonna be good water content with some nice low carbohydrate vegetables in there and excellent protein. So we are going to do a Thai coconut fish chowder. And so again, you can use whether you wanna use fish or chicken or shrimp, or if you just wanna make this vegetarian, you can just add the vegetables that we're gonna be doing today. So I'm gonna go ahead and, I'm gonna, normally you can do it all in one pot, but I'm gonna just do it demonstratively so that you can kind of see what we're doing here in the pan so that you've got a better view for it. But honestly, it could be all done in one pot. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and start with putting some turkey broth in there. And I like to use turkey or chicken or whatever you would like to use as well. If you've got some fish stock that you might already have there, that would be great too. A lot of times I like to make my own. But this is easy, and honestly, this is the easiest soup that you're gonna be able to make. It's done so very, very quickly. And so I'm gonna go ahead and just put that in there. And then, um, let's put that there. And then let's go ahead. Now, what I'm gonna do is also, I wanna infuse this with some lemongrass. And you know, lemongrass is something that you can get in, at, at Ralph's Market and most grocery stores, or even in Asian markets. And so it looks just like this, and so again, um, you can put actually the whole thing in here because we're gonna be taking it out. But what I like to do is I like to take a mallet and I like to just crush it so that it opens up and that we have the aroma of it. So you can just kind of see, I've just kind of left them large because I'm going to remove this uh, before I go to serve this because this isn't really edible, but it's gonna give it a beautiful flavor, very aromatic and really wonderful for the respiratory system as well. So this is great uh, soup to have for the winter time. So I'm gonna go ahead now, I've put in two of these. And so again, once you do this one time, you're gonna kind of get the idea of how lemongrass, lemongrass you want it, but it's just a fa fabulous flavor. So I'm gonna go ahead and go ahead, put that into my broth here. So I've got two of them, and I'm gonna just put them in whole. I'm gonna turn this heat up. Now I'm also going to add some coconut milk. And so again, um, I'm gonna put approximately about two cups of coconut milk in there, one and a half to two, you can kind of see how, how you might like to have it. And once you do it one time, you can alter it. Uh, the coconut is, it's got only about two carbohydrates per cup, so it's really low carbohydrate. Oftentimes this soup requires some, um, they usually put sugar in this, but oftentimes when I taste it and if it's just perfect in sweetness, then I wouldn't add any alcohol sugar like Lakanto. But I've got that on standby in case we want to go ahead and use it. So I'm going to go ahead and put two cups in there. And this is just canned um, coconut milk organic. And so I've mixed actually one uh, coconut milk and one that's just regular, thick and the regular one. So I'm going to go ahead and pour that in there. And I'm going to go ahead and put the lid on and infuse that and just let that kind of heat up there nicely. So we'll go ahead and do that. Now, over here in this pot, I'm just gonna add a two tablespoons, one and a half to two tablespoons of some um, avocado oil. Now I use avocado because it's got a good heating point to it. I could use coconut oil just as easy, but I wouldn't use olive oil because I'm going to uh, bring it up at a little higher uh, heat, but a still saute heat, you could potentially get away with it. Um, I'm gonna put four garlics in there, so you can use as many garlics as you like. Wonderful as an antibacterial, especially for the winter. And then some leeks. Leeks are just a little bit uh, less pungent than onions, but I love leeks because they got a really delicate flavor to it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start by sauteing those. Now, normally you can just do everything in the pan. And so what I like to do a lot of times too is I like to have my broth and uh, cook the lemongrass with it for maybe even 20 minutes just, just to infuse it. But you can do it right on the spot just as easy, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and add, I've got uh, exactly one cup of celery. I just chopped it into little teeny bite-sized pieces. Get all of that in there. And then one cup of red bell pepper, again, just chopped into little bite-sized pieces. So we'll let that saute. I'll put the mushrooms in at the very, very end because I just really just kind of want them just to heat up a little bit before I throw them in there. 
Now you can use any white fish you like. And so again, um, I bought some uh, wild Alaskan cod. It's very inexpensive. I got this at Trader Joe's and it was frozen. So again, I've got approximately about a, anywhere between a pound and a half and two pounds, depending. I'm gonna make this so that I have not, a, not only just enough for tonight, but maybe for the next day or two for lunches. So this makes it really nice. And these kind of soups, which are really great, is you can actually put them in a mason jar and stick them in your freezer so that you can kind of create a nice supply so you don't feel like you're cooking all the time. So now I'm also going to be adding a little heat to this and again I'm doing a chili paste it's called sambal you can use fresh chilies if you like to but once again you know use whatever you have in your kitchen so I've got some nice little sambal here I'm going to put that in in just a second let's get this going turn up the heat a little bit now while all these things are going here I, I so this one it came just like this and so you see they're very thin pieces so I'm going to cut them in half and also to put them in at the very last, because this is gonna take literally like maybe two minutes to cook up. So I'm gonna salt and pepper them first because cod doesn't have a whole lot of flavor, so it's just a beautiful fish to add to this soup because the coconut milk is gonna really infuse it. Um, but normally it's not too, too flavorful because there's not a whole lot of fat on this. Add a little pepper to it too. salt here as well I've got some wonderful ginger as well so I'm gonna put that in in just a moment I've um, done it with a plane so it's very 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 uh, finely shredded so I'm gonna just put that in at the last to give it just a beautiful aromatic uh, flavor as well and then I'm gonna be putting in that chili so I'm going to go ahead and put that there. A lot of moving parts, but guess what? It's so simple. It's going to be so easy for you to do. So again, I'm going to just stack these to make it a little easier cut and just right down the middle. And if there are, you know, if they're already kind of in this big of a piece, you really don't need to cut them any any further down. But I want them to just be really easy to eat. Like some of them are already in that shape, so I'm not gonna play with those too much. Like that one, let's leave it. Just the ones that are slightly large. Some of these are thin, so why bother? And you get a little whiff of this. So again, if you decide you want to do the broth like maybe 20 minutes and just let that lemongrass infuse it, it will be really beautiful. Tomorrow it will be even more flavorful because it will have sat overnight and all of these aromas will have been beautifully fused and married together. They're looking good. Now I'm going to go ahead and throw my ginger in. I've got two tablespoons of ginger here, finely shredded. Mmm, I love the smell of ginger. And again, this is a wonderful antiseptic as well. Great for fending off any kind of respiratory issues, colds, nausea. It's just fantastic. And then again, you know, you can put a tablespoon and a half if you don't want uh, the gin such a, a heat on the ginger. I, I love it. So again, put what you, what you enjoy. So just remember the cold weather, because it um, initiates within you the desire to be warm, you are going to crave carbohydrates more. And so again, I always tell everyone, pay attention to what it is that you're craving. If you've been stressed out all day and you come home, I will guarantee you're gonna be wanting chips. And so the things that you may do in its place would be some nori seaweed, some salted nori seaweed, maybe with a little bit of wasabi on it. Gives you that crunch and that salt that we're looking for. 
Uh, and then make yourself a nice cup of tea. And uh, I love having that apple cinnamon tea because it just gives me that sense of having hot apple cider. Uh, hot apple cider. And in the holiday season, it's not so aromatic as well. It's so satisfying. So after dinner, every night after dinner, I make myself a cup of some tea. And so this is my favorite that I'm using now because it just gives me that cozy, warm feeling as well as something that's um, delicious and kind of has its own sweetness on its own. So I'm going to go ahead and add the sambal here. So again, to your desired heat, okay? And this is a Thai chili here. So this is just um, sambal. It's just chili paste. You can get this at any Asian store. I got this right at Trader Joe's. So I'm going to start out with a teaspoon and let's see the heat of it. And then I can always add. I'm going to go ahead and throw these mushrooms in here. Because remember, we're going to be cooking it again with that broth. So I don't really want to over do the mushrooms, but again, this fish is going to take so little time that we can go ahead and saute this a bit. I'm going to add a little bit of salt to this as well, maybe a little bit of pepper. Let's see how we go. I can turn down the heat here. So I had a little bit on high and now I've just turned it down because the vegetables are starting to soften up a little bit and I really don't want to overcook the mushrooms. I just want to cook them a little bit, but not to their mushy. So once I've got this here, I'm going to taste one of these mushrooms because that's going to give me kind of an idea on the heat that I have here. And I can always add, I got the mushrooms jumping out here. So I can fill a little of the heat there, just enough of the heat. So I probably won't be putting any more in there. I'm going to go ahead and add this here because the rest of those are small enough. They've been salted. They've got a little bit of pepper on them. They are ready to go. Now to this broth, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some lime zest. And I'm also going to add kaffir, powdered kaffir, kaffir leaves. Now you it's hard to get fresh kaffir leaves. You have to oftentimes get them in an Asian market and they're frozen. So I found this on the internet and I love it. It's just called kaffir lime leaf ground. Uh, I got it off of Amazon, but it's just fantastic. And it will just give me that beautiful uh, a Thai Asian taste that I want to have with that kind of little bit of lime. But I'm also going to add some of this lime here and just infuse it a little bit more. And I'm going to be using a plane to do that. I'm going to go ahead and take the lid off of this. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and turn these vegetables off now. And I'm going to just let them sit there for a moment and give this a little stir. Okay. Let's take a little bit of the zest. I'm going to put a teaspoon of this zest in there, maybe half a teaspoon, but pretty much a whole lime. This one's kind of a small one, so we'll see how we go. I'll taste it. So you want to have an organic lime because we are using the pill. And Trader Joe's, you can pretty much get these very inexpensively. They're just a little teeny bit more than the normal lime, so I do it just because I want to really support organic farmers. So the more we buy organic, the better we are going to have in just the normal stores. And I'll be adding some lime juice at the very, very end. Now I'm going to add a teaspoon of the kaffir lime. And I'm also going to add about three tablespoons of fish sauce as well. This is just Thai fish sauce. And you can always add more, but this gives it kind of a nice little fish salty flavor as well. Now I can always add a little more heat to this once I taste this soup as well. So 
Just remember the thing, fun thing about cooking is that you can always add. Sometimes we can't subtract things after we put them together, but we can always add. All right, let's see how we're going here. Mmm, I can already smell that beautiful lime. It just oh, went right into my nose there. Just fantastic. So my suggestion is just to use the coconut milk regular and not so much, I, I, I said coconut cream, but we don't want the coconut cream because it's, it's going to have its thickness in there and we, want, we don't want it to curdle. So again, just use the normal uh, coconut milk in the can organic, okay? It's the same two carb on it. But mostly the uh, thick coconut cream, we would use that for curry, but I'd say the soup, let's just keep it regular, okay? So I'm going to give that a little taste here and let's see how we go on that. Pretty darn good. So honestly, it's already sweet enough. I was thinking about that I might need to have a, add a little bit of Lakanto as a sweetener, but it's totally perfectly sweet enough. So I might even add a little more heat. We'll see. I'm going to go ahead and put these vegetables in here now. Now remember, you can do this all in one pot. It absolutely doesn't need to be in two separate pans. I just wanted to show you what it was like as we sauteed that. And again, this would be a vegetarian soup just in and of itself if you did not want to add any fish, okay? Or if you wanted to add chicken or any of those, those are awesome too. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and taste the broth again because now we've added the vegetables that had a little bit of chili to it. And then I'm going to see if I want to add a little bit more. And then of course, a lot of times what I do is I just put a little, bowl, a little chili um, on the table with a little bit of lime juice as well so people could get infuse it according to their desire because not everybody likes hot. We all like hot in this house, but not everybody likes hot. Pretty darn good. Okay. So when I taste it, I said, okay, it's, pr it's pretty perfect, but I'm going to add just a little tad more of the sambal. Just a tad. So what I'm doing now is I've added one teaspoon. Now I'm going to add another half a teaspoon here. See how fast this soup is? It's so easy. Give a little taste of this. Pretty darn perfect. It's getting good. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and add the fish now. So again, if you take about 20 minutes to just infuse the broth with the lemongrass, you know, kind of at a pretty moderate heat, it'll be just perfect. And then when you add the coconut milk to, uh, add, add the coconut milk to it as well, it'll infuse it really beautifully. And so for time purposes, we're just gonna go ahead and add the fish. And honestly, you could just go ahead and add it just in the same amount of time that we're doing right now. So this fish is gonna take really a short time. So I wanna make sure that everything is just perfect in regards to um, the vegetables being nice and crisp still, but not too soft. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a, a bite of the, um, the mushroom here. Perfect. Yep, I can feel the heat a little bit. As soon as I turned up a little of that sambal, I can feel the heat, so that's awesome. Now what I wanna do is fish out a little of the um, lemongrass here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and fish out the lemongrass. So that's why I keep them in big chunks because it's a lot easier for me to get it out if it was all in little slivers. If I was gonna blend this up in the blender, I wouldn't bother with it, but so I wanna just go ahead and take out as many little pieces as I can there. You don't want to take out your um, your leeks, but you know those should be chopped up really nice where you won't have to 
think too much about that, okay? And you know what you could also do too, is that you could just put this, uh, anything, these, this, this lemongrass, you could put it in a little cheesecloth and just make like a little bouquet and drop it in there so that you don't have to fish. But you know, I cut these big enough so that I can just reach in there and get it. And you know what, if somebody gets a little bit, they can just pull it out, no problem whatsoever. But I think we got all of the lemongrass out of here. There's one little one left here. And then you're just gonna wanna throw that away. So we won't need to eat, have it again. All right, I think all the lemongrass is out. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop this. So I, I, now I have it just really kind of on a simmer. I don't wanna put this on boiling at all. It's gonna take very, very quick to uh, cook this fish. So I'm gonna drop it in there now. That's after I salted it and I put a little bit of pepper in it as well. Okay. I don't have it on low, I have it on a good little simmer, but again, don't have this on boil. Okay, we're gonna let that cook for a second or two, probably like three minutes. So I didn't need to use my Lakanto at all because that, to me, this, this soup is just perfect uh, in terms of its sweetness. And you know, a lot of times when I go to Thai restaurants, their soup's a little sweet. They're just so forward and heavy with the sugar and we don't need it. Let's see how we're going here. You wanna keep your eye on this. Oh, I found another little lemongrass. These little teeny ones, if they slip through, no problem. It's the big old pieces that you really don't want someone to have in their plate. Okay. Let's get a spoon here so we can taste this fabulous soup. So it's really important to recognize that during this month, it's pretty stressful and we're trying to juggle so many things, get the Christmas decorations up, even start presupposing what next year is going to look like and with work and the days getting shorter and shorter, we can get a little stressed out. So there's really nothing more satisfying, nothing more homing than coming to, coming in for a nice bowl of homemade soup. And so once again, just remember there's gonna be a lot of things that are going to be at your disposal. People are gonna be bringing cookies and different types of treats to your work. And so again, if you really stay committed to why I'm doing what I'm doing, it makes it really easy to be able to, to say no with confidence and not with kind of this, oh, I really want that. And so when we kind of really want something that we say, how can we turn it into a keto? So the next time we do a cooking show, I'm going to try, as one of our uh, keto team uh, requested, a cheesecake that will be delicious and low in carbohydrates that you can serve for one of your uh, festivities over the Christmas holiday. So soups are gonna be number one on my list to keep me in keto, being full with water content, but really, really low on the carbohydrates. Let's see how we're doing here. So all you wanna just make sure that it's just kind of a little, see how it just flaked off so beautifully there? So easily just flaked right off. So that is finished. You don't wanna cook it any further than that. Flakes perfectly right off. And you wanna go right there because you're gonna to wanna to heat this soup up tomorrow and then you don't wanna have this fish overcooked at any cost at all, okay? All right. I'm gonna turn it off now and this is perfectly ready and done. I'm gonna taste it one more time for heat. And again, remember, I'm gonna serve this with a little sambal on the side and a little bit of lime so that they could put the lime on it themselves uh, and get the taste that they want. So let's not waste this lime here and let's use it as a little decor. And I cut them a little thick so that they can squeeze it into the soup. So we'll just kind of set that right onto the side there. And let's go ahead and put some of this nice, delicious chowder. Scoot it a little closer. Okay. 
Then I'm gonna top it with just a little bit of chopped fresh cilantro. And just a teeny bit of spring green onions, just a tad. How easy was that? Everyone is going to love this. If you at all love Thai food, you are gonna think this is the bomb and it's just so awesome. There's hardly any carbohydrates in this at all. There is no sweetener in here other than the two carbs per cup of the coconut milk, a little bit of the bell pepper, and uh, leeks, mushrooms, super, super low on the carbohydrate. So this would be accompanied with a beautiful salad. And then that way you've got your live enzyme rich food with those minerals that are so important to keep our body balanced. Let's have a taste of this because this looks absolutely fantastic. So just to kind of show you there, if you can get a, like a little Imagine that, it's just so delicious. Oh, I can smell this coconut, it's so beautiful. Again, you can use anything. You can use shrimp, you can use chicken. Let's have a little taste. I'm gonna just taste the broth first. Oh, every flavor just pops and bursts in my mouth. It's so fantastic. All right, let's have a little of this fish along with everything. And it should be easy to cut, just flake right off. Mm. Don't let any go to waste. It was, it's awesome. So that's the easiest soup ever. It'll stay really good in your refrigerator for a couple of days. So again, this is going to feed, I did, I did two packets of the, um, of the cod. So it's about two pounds and it should really feed a good six people, no problem, very comfortably. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and you have a great day.